it's three o'clock. Oh my God, it's three o'clock. And I have not read much of anything. I'm just out of the shops, dropped Alex off at work, grabbed some groceries, and I brought myself the book so I could check in and see how far I am. I did this. I'm 48 pages in, <laughs> but I do have the rest of my evening pretty much free. So that's fantastic. I am just quickly, I did bring my switch with me as well because Maureen mentioned she has a really good turn at price. So I'm just gonna chill out for a little bit, hop on Animal Crossing, buy and sell some turnips uh, while I'm listening to Blanca and Roja, which I am really enjoying so far. I've listened to the audiobook mostly and then I read a couple of chapters physically. Um, but I'm really, I'm eating chocolate. Oh, my tea. <laughs> no. I'm very sad about that. Alex made me a tea before I had to drop him off to work. And I like, I put it in a cup so I could take it with me, but I forgot. And then I came home and I was like, oh yeah, my tea. It's still kind of warm. It's now five o'clock. <laughs> so it's cold. This is how far I am into Blanca and Roja. So nearing the halfway mark, which is great. I'm currently listening to it on two times speed and there's six and a half hours left. So I should be able to get this read hopefully, by 9 p.m., which is when the next roll drop is going to be revealed. I think I was about to talk about what I was thinking of the book so far when I felt too awkward to continue filming when that person got in their car opposite me in the car park. I'm really enjoying Blank and Broha so far. I think it works really well for audio. It's narrated by four different voice actors. Uh, there are four different characters that we follow, Blanca, Roja, Paige, and Yearling. I'm really impressed by like three out of four of the narrators. One of them I feel like doesn't have as much emotion as the others and it falls a little bit flat, but generally really enjoying the audiobook. And then the writing is just absolutely beautiful. I love how it feels like a fairy tale. It's so rich and descriptive. And so far I've been really loving the sisterly bond between Blanca and Roja, but it's getting to the point in the story where tensions are forming and I feel like the competitiveness could be a little bit ugly. So we'll see, <laughs> we'll see. But I, I, I really love how much they love and care for each other. But also the friendship with Paige and Yearling, like we haven't seen quite as much of them at the moment, but there's been mentions of the history of their friendship and I feel like I'll get a much clearer understanding of their dynamic um, now that they are more present in the story. I just really enjoyed as well the opening scene for this and how it touches upon this generation's old family curse and I just loved how it was told. Um, I'm trying to be as vague as possible because you should all pick it up and enjoy it for yourselves. I'm going to knuckle down, get tidying, continue my listening and I'm looking forward to it. I'm really enjoying it so far. Like, what the frick? Ugh, I suck. She stands on the sideline, dance slow and looks at me. She must be the sunlight, she has a little more tonight. We're slowly getting there, very, very slowly, but I thought I would interject because it's after nine o'clock, which means the next round of prompts is here. So I'm gonna take a look at the prompt, let you guys know which one I'm gonna choose and what book I'll be reading for that prompt. I'm still two hours away from finishing Blanca and Roja, but that's fine. Let's hop onto Twitter. Prompt number three. So whilst one of my current reads would work perfectly for this, it is a larger fantasy novel that 
takes me some time to read, so I don't think it's the perfect thing to read for a readathon, but I'm gonna I'm gonna see what other prompts come up later on, and if I have kind of more time then I might come to that. That book is The Obelisk Gate. But I decided to go for a graphic novel because readathon, short books, I'm running a little bit behind. And so I just kind of wanted to balance it out and hopefully by the time the next roll drop happens I will have finished both of the books or be close to it anyway. And that and that is Lumberjanes Volume 3 and this one is for the culturally diverse prompt. The explanation for this one is a book that is culturally different from your own experience. This can be set in a different country following marginalized characters, translated books, set in a fantasy world inspired by a real world culture or country. I think this will do quite nicely so I'm excited to get into this one. So we have some awesome queer representation in here. There's a non-binary or gender queer character, queer females, trans female, there's also an Asian main character, Latinx main character. I know I try to make her mine, but at the same time I know love is hard to find. now 9 p.m. on Sunday so 12 hours of the readathon left. I haven't really checked in much today because as you would have seen Alex and I stayed up until the wee hours of the morning doing a puzzle. Then I did a live show with some reading sprints and that was like a three hour long live show during which I finished reading Blanca and Roja and Lumberjanes Volume 3. I've been having a great time reading both of those. Blanca and Roja was, again, just such a beautifully written book with just some wonderful relationships, familial, romantic friends. It was, it was a great time. I'm very glad that I read that. And then Lumberjanes continues to be great. Um, I just love how fun and weird it is. It's a group of girls, kind of like girl guides, who are on this summer camp and they just go on really, really strange, fantastical and wild adventures and I just love it. I, I never know what to expect. Quick update on the third and fourth round of prompts. Round number three, the options were to read a mystery or thriller or a book that you've been gifted and I decided to go with one of my current reads, Scythe by Neil Schusterman. Back in the day I bought myself a copy of Scythe and then a couple of weeks later I received it in a subscription box that I was sent for free and then I also gifted one of those copies onto another friend as well. So I think like you could go either or in terms of receiving gifts or giving gifts for this prompt. So it works for both. I'm halfway through at the moment. I didn't get much of this read today at all. And then the final prompt that I'm going with, the choices were to read a young adult fantasy or a contemporary or romance. I've decided to go with a contemporary graphic novel and that is Fence Volume 1 by C.S. Picat and Joanna the Mad. All I really know about this graphic novel is that there's fencing and I think a gay romance. So that sounds delightful and again I have this to read in 12 hours but I also need to take into consideration that I will be sleeping for a good eight or so hours knowing me. So yeah I thought I would pick another short 
quick easy read for the fourth prompt. I'm going to spend a bit of time reading this, hopefully finish that and then finish up the evening by reading as much as Scythe as I can before falling asleep. The plan is to wake up a little bit earlier tomorrow morning and hopefully read some more of this before the readathon ends at 9am for me. So let's do this. So it is 7.30. As you would have seen, I've, I had a nap <laughs> as I was reading Fence. I fell asleep like 10 pages from the end or something like that. I was asleep for like 20 or 30 minutes. I know that my video kept on recording for a while, but when I actually woke up, I'd completely like I dropped the book and my camera had turned itself off. But I did end up reading the last little bit and then I continued some more of Scythe, I was listening to and physically reading at the same time. Here we are. So I'm on page 340 of Scythe, and in terms of audiobook time, there's two hours and 10 minutes left. So I'm gonna try and finish it before the end of the readathon. I should be able to do it because um, whilst reading and listening at the same time, I usually put it on like 2.5, sometimes three times speed, depending on how fast the narrator talks. <laughs> to go for the readathon. The readathon has ended. That concludes Becca's book hopalathon. Let me get the books so I can talk through everything. So this is everything that I ended up reading through Becca's book Opalathon and I thought I would just wrap things up a little bit and actually take the time to tell you what I thought of the last two books that I've read since well, Scythe I just finished a few minutes ago. <laughs> book number one I read Blanket and Roha by Anna Marie McLemore. This was for the prompt to read a paranormal or magical realism novel. This was such a beautifully written story. I've been wanting to read Anna Marie McLemore for the longest time and I'm glad that I finally finally picked up one of their books. We follow two Latinx sisters and two boys from town, one of which is genderqueer. And we follow all of these four characters whose lives become really heavily intertwined after the Del Cisne sisters, Blanca and Roja, enter into this kind of game with these swans, which will leave one of them as a girl, and one of them will be trapped into the body of the swan. Very much enjoyed this and would definitely recommend. Then I picked up Lumberjanes Volume 3, and like I said, this is just such a fun, fun series. We're following these group of girls, and like I mentioned before, I think one of the main characters is Asian, one is Latinx, we have um, some queer relationships, there's a trans character, and it's just like a really wonderful, diverse bunch of girls uh, going on these weird, and wacky adventures. It's about friendship and loyalty, sisterhood, love. This is the book that I chose for the prompt to read a culturally diverse book. Next I have Fence Volume 1 and I chose this for the prompt to read a contemporary or romance novel. So this is like a contemporary graphic novel that very heavily centres around fencing. We follow Nicholas who is accepted into this prestigious private school and in order to get his scholarship he needs to get on the fencing team. Um, he rooms with this guy here Seiji who is very very well known in the fencing world and I think was very close to winning the previous year's nationals? Was it nationals? Something along those lines. He's very very good. The two of them have a little bit of a rivalry. So this is definitely kind of introducing us to the characters so far. There hasn't been a whole lot going on. It is like definitely still the early stages of the tryout period so I think it's still a little too early in the story arc for me to make a decision on what I think but so far I am enjoying it. I think like I'm, I'm definitely not the type of person who is into sports but I think I still find myself enjoying graphic novels that 
include or focus on sports because it like I don't have all of the exposition and details about sporting I it just you see things happen relatively quickly and it doesn't touch upon things that might bore me <laughs> I'm not super into fencing or anything but I'm enjoying this and I'm kind of into the whole competitiveness and I think I do want to continue reading this series and seeing the different relationships progress because again people are still just kind of getting to know each other and uh not too much happened so far, but I enjoyed it. And lastly, I finished reading Scythe by Neil Schusterman. So this one I had already started reading before the readathon. So I read, I think, like 240 pages of this during the actual readathon. And this one was for the challenge to read a book that was gifted to me. And I'm sure that a lot of you guys have heard about Scythe, but if not, it's basically set in a utopian world where humans have conquered death. There is no disease, there is no war, but in order to maintain the population and ensure numbers don't get too out of control. There is a need for sides and the sides decide who will die. So we follow Citra and Rowan as they apprentice to a scythe and it's about the two of them kind of learning to master the art of killing. The first half of this I was definitely really enjoying but it wasn't until like the last half that things kind of took it up a notch for me. I really enjoyed how this concluded and there's just so much going on that I cannot wait to learn more about in the rest of the books. So definitely keen to continue reading the series. That concludes this reading vlog. I'm very happy with how I did for the readathon. Obviously I picked up some super short graphic novels so I could help my progress along a little bit, but I'm happy, I'm happy. I enjoyed everything I read, which is great, but now I have to get on with my day. It is Monday, so I gotta go to work. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you very soon in a new video, but until then, I'll talk to you in the comments. Bye.